The 2023 fantasy season isn't even underway yet. So is it too early to start talking about who may be the number one overall player heading into 2024? I don't think so, because if they're the number one overall player last year, it means they had a great season this year. So let's take a look at the players that have the best shot at climbing up draft board. Headliner Nation, in today's video, we are gonna be breaking down some of the most likely candidates to take over as the 1.01 in drafts next year, and then also throw in a few dark horses that could make their way up there as well. And we're gonna break down some pros and cons to each of them and try to dive into why we feel like 2023 could be a huge season for these guys. And if we get a thousand likes on this video, I'm gonna pick somebody to win a free draft guide, but quite honestly, you should just go and buy yours right now. You can get it at the fantasyheadliners.com. The link is in the description below. For $21.99, you're gonna be getting almost 300 videos that you can't find here on YouTube, plus a bunch of exclusive content that you can't find anywhere on any platform. You know what? And if you purchase your draft guide and you're picked in one of these videos to get one for free, we'll refund you the purchase price. So there's a win win situation. So hit the link in the description below. Go get your draft guide now so we can get ready to win a bunch of fantasy football ships in 2023. All right, I've got four guys that I consider to be locks for potentially the top pick overall in 2024. Justin Jefferson, who is this year's 1.01 for the most part. Jamar Chase, who's right behind him. Christian McCaffrey, who's the top running back being drafted this year. And Bijan Robinson. Let's start with Justin Jefferson, and this offense is probably going to throw the ball just as much as they did last season. Their defense will get an upgrade just from players being healthy this season, but getting rid of a guy like Zadaria Smith is a pretty big deal, and their defense already wasn't that good last season, so if they're going to give up the same amount of points, they're going to be expected to throw the same amount this year, and Justin Jefferson will pretty easily lead this team in targets. The hope is, is that a younger, more explosive Jordan Addison coming in as the wide receiver too doesn't take too much from him. It's hard to argue that a guy like Adam Thielen didn't lose a step last season and now that you're adding in a much younger and more talented player in Jordan Addison there is going to be an opportunity for him to potentially see a little bit more targets. You also can't forget about KJ Osborne either and you have TJ Hawkinson. The big thing for me is hopefully Justin Jefferson stays a little bit more consistent because he absolutely Absolutely disappeared a couple of times last season when it meant the most to fantasy owners. But he's probably the biggest lock to move on and be the 1.01 for back to back seasons. Jamar Chase from Cincinnati, he's going basically two and three in a majority of drafts right now. And even though he's got players there like T. Higgins and Tyler Boyd, he still continues to be the main option and the biggest deep play threat in this offense. And even after hurting his hip last season and coming back much quicker than expected, he went off down the stretch and showed us exactly why people are drafting him so high. Really the big thing for me is making sure that he just stays healthy because we know he's still gonna command the volume, we know the big plays are still going to be there, and we've seen it the last two years with T. Higgins and Tyler Boyd, so that doesn't change a whole lot. If Christian McCaffrey can come out and have another big season with the San Francisco 49ers, he's definitely a guy that a lot of people will look at being the 1.01 again next season. Now, next year, he is going to be reaching that running back cliff where guys start to fall off, and given the amount of workload he's having in his career so far, it wouldn't be surprised to see him start to show some of those signs. But the best thing going for Christian McCaffrey is the fact that he's in an elite offense with an elite head coach, and he's going to be utilized properly in this offense. Health is going to be the name of the game with him. If he stays healthy, he produces, and fantasy owners are happy with him this season, he's going to be taken very high again next year. But if he deals with injuries, or if we see that cliff hit him this season, Christian McCaffrey is going to be a guy that I could see easily slipping outside of the first round next year. What about B. John Robinson? If he performs like a lot of people expect him to, he will probably be the number one overall pick next year. And quite honestly, if you said, Kyle, put your money on the guy to be the 1.01 right now, I'd put it on B. John. We know he's going to get plenty of touches. We know this is an offense that is going to run the football quite a bit. Do I think he has that type of ceiling to be the number one overall player in fantasy? 
Absolutely I do. But for this season, I have to see how Desmond Ritter turns out, and I have to see how the usage of Tyler Algier cuts into Bijan Robinson. And I also need to know for certain that this is a guy that we can expect to get anywhere between 60 to 80 targets on a regular basis. If none of those concerns or fears come to fruition, then this is a guy that's going to have well over 300 total touches this season, will pick up plenty of yards and score plenty of touchdowns. And again, if that happens, then he absolutely will be locked in as the number one overall player in 2024. Let's talk about a few guys with some very strong potential, but probably wouldn't end up happening unless they put together a perfect season. Nick Chubb, Cooper Cup, and Jonathan Taylor are going to be my three picks for this section. Nick Chubb is getting more love this season than he ever has before because in years past, people have always argued, but Nick Chubb doesn't get enough receiving work to warrant a top of the draft pick. We know the guy is going to run for plenty of yards. We know the guy is going to score touchdowns. We know he's going to be a league leader in a lot of efficiency categories. But if he takes the next step this season and puts together a fantastic workload in the passing game, then we 100% are going to see him move into a spot where people will want to invest on a yearly basis. And honestly, it wouldn't take that much work in the passing game for him to become the 1.01. Last year, when Jonathan Taylor reached that plateau, he didn't get a ton of work in the passing game the year prior either. He was being drafted that high for his rushing potential and his rushing touchdowns. And as long as the Cleveland Browns don't get too pass happy and try to convince everybody in the world that trading for Deshaun Watson was worth it and the investment in the money was worth it and they stay balanced, he's going to have a great shot to break off some huge plays this season and to put together a ton of rushing yards on top of it. Cooper Cup is looking to bounce back from his injury, and quite honestly, if he had put together back-to-back -back years of top wide receiver output and he hadn't gotten hurt last season, he may be higher than Justin Jefferson even in this year's draft. Now, the biggest thing with Cooper Cup is going to be the health of Matthew Stafford. There isn't going to be a ton of guys to throw to in Los Angeles, and they're going to probably be throwing quite a bit given the fact that their defense is probably going to be a little worse off than what we've seen in recent years. But Cooper Cup wins all over the field, and because he works out of the slot so much, it allows the Rams to put him in a ton of mismatch opportunities. So if Stafford can stay fully healthy, and Cooper Cup can stay fully healthy, and we see him finish as a guy that is a top three wide receiver, there will probably be a lot of people at the top of next year's draft that highly consider drafting Cooper Cup as well. What about Jonathan Taylor? He was the 1.01 last year, but he got hurt. And this Colts offense has an opportunity to be absolutely elite this season with Anthony Richardson at the helm. And even if Richardson still displays some inaccuracies and some inconsistencies in the pass game, as long as he shows a growth throughout the season and enough potential for people to finally buy into him next year, which newsflash, you should already be buying into Anthony Richardson. If you aren't, that's on you, not on me. That would put Jonathan Taylor in a great position next season to be considered one of the top draft picks. Keep in mind in the games that Jonathan Taylor was healthy last season, he was actually pacing ahead of his 2021 volume even though he was a little bit behind in yards and way behind in touchdowns. And if you're watching this right now, trying to convince yourself or anybody else that Jonathan Taylor is going to lose volume to Anthony Richardson, I highly encourage you to check out this video. We'll put it right here, where I break down how running backs and running quarterbacks don't really hurt each other that much. And you know what? I'll put the link to the video in the description below as well. All right, let's move on to some dark horse candidates, some guys that probably won't reach that level next season, but if things go according to plan, I think people are absolutely going to be talking about them. Some of them might be a little bit of a hot take as well, but stay with me here. Number one is going to be A.J. Brown. He could end up being the 1.01 wide receiver next season if he puts together another fantastic year and proves that Devontae Smith is nothing to worry about. And I've already talked about him so much in my videos that I don't need to discuss him anymore. You can look back through the thumbnails and you'll see which ones I'm talking about. Here's one for you to think about. Amon Ross St. Brown. Now, he is a guy that I do have some 
some concerns on losing potential volume. Knowing that guys like Jameer Gibbs, Sam Laporta, bringing Marvin Jones back, and getting Jamison Williams back and healthy after his six game suspension. And one concern about Amon Ross St. Brown last year is that the big play potential just wasn't really there. There wasn't a ton of upside after the catch, even though really he's one of the most sure-handed wide receivers in all of football. But let's say for a second that everything works out perfectly for the Lions this season. And this offense functions in an extremely high level. If that's the case, Amon Ross St. Brown will probably be a huge part of that and could see a Cooper Cup-like rise in the wide receiver rankings heading into 2024. Some of those big plays and plays after the catch he missed out on last season could be there this year with the amount of weapons that they have. We just have to hope that he doesn't lose nearly as much volume. Here's one for you. Ramondre Stevenson. This is a guy that going into last year, if you bought our draft guide and listened to us, I told you all he was going to make a huge impact. And he absolutely did. And it could happen again in 2023. Now, as of this recording, they haven't added any veteran running backs. You've got Ty Montgomery there, and you've got Pierre Strong. And those guys could help in the pass game a little bit. But Ramondre Stevenson is going to be the main playmaker on the ground. And we all Already saw how much he could do in the passing game last year, given the fact that he was third in running back targets. And I know people are generally like Kyle, but we've seen what those running backs have done in the past and how Bill Belichick likes to split backfield and things like that. I don't think that's going to happen because we really haven't seen a guy like Ramondre Stevenson in this offense in quite some time. He truly is a dual threat quarterback. He can do anything that you want him to on the ground and through the air. And he's going to be a big reason why this Patriots offense takes another step forward instead of back like they did last season. Honestly, Brees Hall probably would have been the 1.01 this year if he didn't get hurt last season. Don't mind me. I'm not changing clothes in the middle of a video. Actually, I had to come back and redo this part because it was about Brees Hall. And as I was editing this video, it started to come out that Dalvin Cook could be signing over the weekend with the New York Jets, which obviously would have affected Hall and would have made this part of the video may sound a little weird. But you know what? I'm still going to put Hall in this category because who knows what could happen. Maybe Dalvin Cook doesn't have it anymore. Maybe he gets signed. Maybe they sign another veteran. Maybe they don't sign anybody at all. But if they bring in somebody to back up Brees Hall and they just don't work out and Brees Hall is explosive and doesn't have any setbacks with his injury, I mean, if he hadn't gotten hurt last year, I'd put a lot of money on the fact that he would have been the 1.01 this season. And honestly, we're really kind of looking forward to 2024 anyway. So if in 2023, Brees Hall and Dalvin Cook have to coexist, or again, Brees Hall and anybody else, if they have to coexist and Brees Hall looks healthy and he finished the season healthy and he's explosive and he's still looks like the guy that showed up at the beginning of 2022, people are going to be drafting him really, really high. If this offense goes crazy and Aaron Rodgers is everything that he used to be in Green Bay, people are still going to look at Bryce Hall because any veteran they bring in is probably only going to be a one-year deal. What about Kenneth Walker? Lots of people being very cautious with him because of Zach Charbonnet. And I get that because I think Charbonnet is extremely talented. And unfortunately, he's going to land on the same team as Kenneth Walker, but I don't think that's going to hurt Kenneth Walker really as much as a lot of people feel volume wise. I still think Kenneth Walker is going to be tied into a top RB1 type of performance this year. Really, I could see him landing anywhere from RB6 to RB10 because he's got the big playmaking ability and with all the offensive weapons there, even if we do see some of Kenneth Walker's volume trickle over to Zach Charbonnet, he should still see more than enough efficiency to put together a big season. But for him to get there, we are going to have to truly see that Zach Charbonnet is a threat to maybe only 30 or 35% of his workload. If he starts to cut into too much of it, definitely could be a first round pick next year, but wouldn't reach all the way up to 1.01. All right, my last dark horse candidate is going to be Garrett Wilson. And why? Well, what if he actually is Devontae Adams 2.0? And we've heard it from several different guys, including Aaron Rodgers himself, that he feels like Garrett Wilson has a lot of the same characteristics and will fit his game plan exactly the way Devontae Adams did in Green Bay. And while that's great and all, and maybe he 
he does take that Justin Jefferson or Jamar Chase-like jump this season, we need to make sure that Aaron Rodgers is actually playing like his maybe 35-year-old self instead of a 40-year-old. Because keep in mind, there isn't a whole lot of 40-year-old quarterbacks that have been successful at the NFL level. Heck, most guys are done before that. So for me, Garrett Wilson has that potential, but he's going to have to have tons of volume, and he's going to have to have tons of yards, and he's going to have to have tons of touchdowns. For him to reach that potential of being maybe the 1.01 next year, he's going to have to put together like 16 to 1,700 receiving yards. He's going to have to have well over 100 catches, and he's going to have to have about 12 touchdowns. All right, Headliner Nation, this was kind of a fun video to do to look ahead, see who could have big seasons in 2023, and to see who could come out on the other side next year as our top choice for number one overall pick. Pick. And I decided to include a lot of wide receivers in this video because we've seen a shift to more and more fantasy owners wanting to draft them in the first round. And again, take this video for what it's worth, a fun breakdown of some of the top guys that maybe do make an historic climb next season. I'm not setting any of these guys in stone and I'm surely not telling you that any of them are the 1.01 overall right now. But we'll see what happens and make sure you hit that like button on the way out and comment down below with your dark horse candidate to be the 1.01 overall next season because if this video hits a thousand likes i'll pick someone in the comments to win a free draft guide but more importantly if you're new here to the channel you gotta subscribe and stick around all off season and in season with us but for now headliner nation i'm gonna get out of here peace out stay safe and healthy and i'll catch you all on the next episode of the fantasy headliners <laughs>